Calvary. For our 10 a.m. service, we're glad you're here to worship with us. If you're with, visiting with us, we're glad you're here too. And uh, have a good time today worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have a bulletin, Amen. we'll Amen, look brother. at your uh, announcements that are in there. And if there's some that need to be added, <clears throat> we'll do that this time. Uh, tonight's Bible study, 6 p.m. here at the church, uh, Kingdom Disciples with Brother Tony Evans. is the one that's going to be leading tonight. Uh, in this service, all right? And a video, and then Brother Kevin will be sharing with us after that, all right? Boyd Brown's going to have a, a baby brother, and uh, so uh, the items uh, are listed there. You can bring. They're not going to have a shower, but you can bring it, put it in the boxes or the baskets at the entrance to the to the church, the church here, all right? And also going to be a baby shower this afternoon for Rachel Bishop Young. It'll be here at 3 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and it's a boy. So that's this afternoon at 3. Deacons meeting today at 5 in the Fellowship Hall over there. And then the WMU is going to meet on Monday, February the 14th at 1030 in the Fellowship Hall. All right. Is there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Okay, if not, prayer request to mention this morning. Okay. 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 I need to remember Diane, Terry, and the family. Diane's mother passed away. Uh, this week and the visitation at 1 o'clock Tuesday and the funeral at 2 at Eddie's, right? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it was mentioned in our first service, uh, Jackie mentioned a, a young man that works with him, Joey Dye, we need to remember, he's got shingles, he's a young man and 
shingles were in his ears and his throat. Never heard like, but uh, didn't remember him. Uh, Emily Biggers, you shared. You share just that. She. Yeah, Miss Emily Biggers. She's the wife of a pastor friend of mine. Back uh, in Bay Springs, my first pastorate. Of course, he passed away with colon cancer, and then uh, she's in the hospital. But they're just real dear people, and so she's in the hospital and wanted us to pray for her. Miss Emily Biggers. Any others we need to? Of course, and then you remember Stan. Stan's up at Brother Danny's mother. It was mentioned also in the first service to remember our servicemen and women are being put over there in, uh, I guess you'd say, Eastern Europe. We need to pray for that situation and pray that our leaders will make wise decisions of things that they're doing. If not anymore, David Smith, will you lead us in prayer, please? There's power in the blood.
I believe we got a special this time. Brother Danny Bishop's here with us this yeah. morning. And uh, he's going to come bless our heart. You going to stand? You're not going to play the piano and sing? All right. Well, come on up. I'll give you the words back. Good to be with y'all this morning. I had to sing this song a long time. It was such a lovely day. The sun was shining. The gentle wind was blowing my way Not a storm cloud inside Then suddenly without a warning Storm surrounded my life But even in the storm I can feel the calm Here's a reason why I know the peace speaker I know him by name I know the peace speaker He controls the wind When he says peace be still, they'd have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. Yes, I know him by name. There's never been another man. With power of this friend By simply saying Peace be still He can calm the strongest wind That's why I never worry When storm clouds come that he is near to drive away my fear I can smile and say I know the peace speaker I know him by name I know the peace speaker he controls the winds and when, when he says peace be still, they have to obey. I'm glad I know the peace speaker. Yes, I know him by name. I 
I'm glad I know the peace speaker. Yes, I know him by name. I know him by name. And his name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. I tell you, there's just something about that name, amen? There's something about the name of Jesus. Would you say it with me? Just say Jesus. Wow. Say it again, Jesus. Wow. Ooh, what a wonderful name he is. Amen. Jesus. Just the mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Maybe you'd like to share a word of testimony this morning. Maybe you'd like to stand and just share what Jesus has done for you this week. His word tells us he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. The, yes, Brother Terry. Thank you, Brother Terry. He's got a good last name, Bishop. So he's got a good last name, I'm telling you. <laughs> Somebody else want to stand and share? Sometimes it just feels good to get up and praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sister. Sister Sharon's going to travel to Jonesboro. She's got she's going to share Jesus tonight with a word and song and so We'll be in prayer for her. God give you a safe trip and 
the anointing be upon you tonight. Anybody else? Come on, Brother Wayne. We prayed for a drummer a long time, Brother Wayne, and he, he brought you over here from Melbourne. We really appreciate you coming over here, too. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church at this time. Children's Church, God's blessed us with a lot of a lot of children. Amen. Even in all this snow and cold weather, there we've got some here with us today. Praise the Lord. All right, Miss Addie. <laughs> God is good. And all the time. If you have your Bibles, please be turning to the book of 2 Corinthians. We're going to look at chapter 7 today, 2 Corinthians. Our main verses are going to be 4 through 7, but I'm going to start at the very first verse here in just a moment and read through verse 7. So please be turning there in your copy of God's Word. Last week we finished up a four-week series on the subject of fear. And I thought today's message was very fitting uh, to come after that series on fear because what we're going to be looking at today really goes hand in hand with fear. This morning we're going to be looking at something we all have to deal with from time to time. And it's not taxes, by the way. I know some of you may be thinking, well, it's taxes. But we're not going to be talking about taxes, but it may have to do with taxes because we're going to be talking about today about stress. Stress. And if I had a title for today's message, it would be, well, I'm all stressed out. All stressed out. You know, we're living in a time when it seems that there's more stress than ever before, amen? I heard a story one time about a lady who called her pastor one day and she said, Pastor, I tried to call you all day Monday and I could not get a hold of you. And the pastor said, well, Monday is my day off and what I do on Monday is I rest on Monday and, and basically I regroup, you know, after the weekend and after Sunday services, I take Monday off to regroup. And well, she told the pastor, she said, well, pastor, the devil never takes any time off. And he said, well, you know that's true. And if I didn't take a day off, then I'd be just like the devil. I thought that sounded like good stress management that the pastor was using there. But the truth is, if you don't manage your stress, your stress will manage you. Did you hear that? If you don't manage your stress... Your stress will manage you because stress can squeeze years off of your life. It can even cost you your life if you don't know how to handle it. There are so many people today, and many of them are even followers of Jesus Christ. They're so tense, and they're running around so busy, so stressed out, and in such a great hurry. You know, for some reason, the devil has fooled a lot of folks into thinking that they always have to be in a hurry and that causes a lot of stress in their lives. We never have time to be still and to be quiet in the presence of God. You know, that's one thing I love about the people here in Calico Rock. When we moved here almost 14 years ago, 
one thing that really caught my attention was folks around here hardly ever get in a hurry for anything. I mean, just take off to Mountain Home. And I mean, between here and Mountain Home, you're going to get behind somebody, one of them Calico Rock folks, and you know what? They're not going to be in a hurry, amen. You can always tell who the people are from off or who the people are visiting, you know. You can always tell who the tourists are because they're the ones when you start the mountain home, they're right on your bumper, right? And the first chance they get, they will come around you and you're like, good gracious alive, those folks are acting crazy. But that's one thing I love about Caligo Rock. It's kind of a laid back place. It's kind of laid back. We really don't get in a hurry for a lot of things. Our generation, though, can be summed up in three words. Hurry, worry, and bury. Those three words. Think about it. Our generation can be summed up in three words. Hurry, worry, and bury. We're living in a time of stress. And because of this, we could actually call our age. We're living in the age of stress. A mad dash, quick cash. That's what we know. And what goes with that is stress. Stress and more stress. That's what I want to talk to you about in this message this morning, all stressed out. So if you have our text, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, we'll start in verse 1. If you have that, say, I have it, Pastor. Would you please stand? With me in the reverence to the reading of God's word, beginning in verse 1 and reading down through verse 7. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Verse 2, open our hearts to us, open your hearts to us. We have wronged no one, we have corrupted no one, and we have cheated no one. I do not say this to condemn, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Verse 4, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Verse 6, Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you, When he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Now, may it penetrate our very hearts. Lord, may it change us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, you may be seated. Thank you so much. Now, what do you do when you're all stressed out? What do you do? What do you do to overcome this stress factor in which we live in today? Many people try to find things to relax them. They try to find things to mellow them out. They try to find things to help them forget of their troubles, forget of their worries, forget about the stress in their lives. A lot of people use alcohol, they use drugs, they use a lot of different things in order to try to get them over a stressful situation. But I want to tell you something, all those things are only temporary. They're only temporary. That means when you come down, your problems are still there. The stress is still there. The worry is still there. What we need is a total fix. What we need is a total cure. Amen? We don't need a temporary thing. We need a total cure. And we're going to find out what that cure is today. 
I don't know about you, but I need a total cure, amen, for stressful situations and worryful, worryful situations. And to start things off, I think we need to look at the description of stress. The description of stress. Paul says here in verse 5, For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, and inside were fears. Now here's a man, Paul, an apostle of God, the apostle to the Gentiles. Here's a man, a very spiritual man, and he's all stressed out. And if Paul can be stressed out, let me tell you something, you can be stressed out. I can be stressed out. We find Paul here in verse 5 all stressed out. He says, our flesh had no rest. The word that Paul uses here that's translated rest in this verse is the Greek word anison. And that's where we get our English word anison from. My mother believed in two kinds of medicines, and that was mercurochrome and anison. Whatever your problem was, mercurochrome could fix it, and an, or anison, one of the two. But we see this word here, rest, that Paul talks about in verse 5. This word anison, where we get our word anison from, describes somebody who is free from strain, somebody who is free from affliction. And Paul says, our flesh had no anison. Our flesh had no rest. And then he goes on to say, but we were troubled on every side. The word here translated trouble means to squeeze or to press. It was used in that day to actually talk about the process of squeezing the grapes in order to get the grape juice or a wine press. And they did that by using rocks. They would take rocks and they would take those rocks and pile on top of the grapes and the, the rocks would squeeze the juice out of the grape. Paul is saying here, I feel so heavy, just like rocks are on my back. Let me ask you something. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt just a pile of rocks was on your back and you were carrying a heavy load? Has life ever squeezed you? Has stress ever been so heavy on you that it seemed like a ton of rocks were on your back? Well, Paul was in that place. Paul says, I'm there. I'm at that place. He says our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. And then he goes on to say, outside were conflicts and inside were fears. In other words, he had fightings without and he had fears within. Circumstances were weighing upon him. Some of you here this morning and some of you watching via the internet, you may be so stressed out that you can't even eat. You may be so stressed out that you can't even sleep regardless of the pain pills you take or the sleeping pills you take. You cannot get any rest. That's where Paul was. That may be where you are today. The only thing that perhaps is keeping you going is all those monster drinks you drink, all those Red Bulls you drink. I know people are like that. That's what they got to have every day, one right behind the other. All stressed out. And I understand. I understand because you've got deadlines to meet. And, and it seems like these days and times you can't find anybody who wants to work. But you've got deadlines to meet. You've got things that has to be done. You know, when the baby is waking up all hours of the night, that can stress you out. When you take that thermometer and you put it up to your head and you squeeze the trigger, and instead of it being green, it turns red and says, beep, 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 beep. And you look and you, oh, no, I've got fever. Do I have COVID? I mean, things like this are stressing us out every day. I understand. When your light bill comes in and you look at it, 
and is more than you have money in the bank to pay. That can stress you out. That can stress you out. You see, stress is the gap. It's that gap between the demands placed on you and the strength and time and means you have to meet those demands. That gap is where that stress is. Over here you have your responsibilities. You have your necessities. You have your deadlines. You have your demands. All those things you want to do, you have to do, you ought to do, you must do. They're over here, but on this side. Then over here pulling you to the opposite direction is your inabilities, your weaknesses. Your, and you think, I ought to do it, I must do it, but I just can't do it. And you know what that causes? Stress. You're all stressed out. It's that gap. It's on your bulletin. Coming up, that gap between all your ought to's and your can do's. At least you're frustrated and upset, and here's what's on your bulletin. Stress happens when your can do can't keep up with your want to. Did you hear that? Stress happens when your can do can't keep up with your want to. And you know what I've learned? The older I get, the more of those I have. Amen? You folks awake out there this morning? Do you know where I'm coming from? Now here's Paul describing in verse 5. Our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. He was physically tired, worn out physically. And then he says, outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Not only was he physically tired, but he was spiritually troubled inside. Inside were fears, phobias. In other words, he was running scared. And he couldn't get it off his mind. For some reason, when, we, when we're stressed out, we cannot get that off of our minds, whatever it is that's stressing us out. I mean, we go to sleep with it on our minds. We wake up with it on our minds. Have you ever said that? I just can't get it off my mind. Let me tell you something this morning. When you get physically tired and spiritually troubled, something's got to break. Something's going to happen. You need to find some peace. But aren't you glad you know the peace speaker? Aren't you glad you know the peace speaker? So we've seen the description of stress I want us to turn our attention now to the destruction of stress the destruction of stress because stress is very destructive the American Heart Association estimates that the total cost of stress in the workplace in America is over 100 billion dollars a year Do you know that Americans consume over 5 million pounds of aspirin every year? And I'm not talking about people who take the low-dose aspirin, you know, for their heart. I'm talking about people who are taking aspirin for stress. Things like that cause, because stress causes headaches and things. They take over 5 million pounds of aspirin. In America every year. Man, that's a lot of aspirin. That's a lot of Edison. And don't think stress is only for adults. Isaiah 40, 30 says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Do you know the highest rate of suicide in the United States of America is not among older folks. The highest rate of suicide is among young adults between the age of 18 and 21. That's the highest rate of suicide in America. John Drakeford, he wrote a book dealing with stress. The name of the book is The Awesome Power of the Healing Thought. And in this book, he basically dis discusses how to have stability when the world around you is falling to pieces. And he discusses the impact that stress has on us. It's kind of neat because he uses what he calls 
life-changing units, life-changing units to determine the amount of stress someone is under, life-changing units, units, U-N-I-T-S, units. He says death of a spouse is rated 100 life-changing units. Death of a close family member, he gives them 65 life-changing units. Divorce, he gives divorce 73 life-changing units. Retirement, boy, you'd think retirement would be a good thing. Well, it's not for some people. He gives retirement 45 life-changing units. And what he's drawn the conclusion to is nobody within their own strength can handle 300 or more life-changing units in a 12-month period without suffering serious physical and emotional problems. Do you know that some 174 diseases are directly caused by stress? 174 diseases have been discovered being directly linked to stress. Here's what happens when you get under stress. I'm not a doctor, but I, I can read. Here's what happens when you get under stress. Your body goes on alert. It's a natural thing. Your body goes on alert. Your glands begin dumping a number of enzymes and chemicals into your bloodstream when you get under stress. Two of those chem chemicals, number one is adrenaline. Adrenaline, and that kind of gets you ready to run or fight. It's the fight or flight chemical, adrenaline. When you're under stress, adrenaline gets pumped into your bloodstream. The second chemical that your body pumps into your bloodstream, there are endorphins that are pumped into your bloodstream. And that is there, they're there in case you get hurt because that deals with pain. So you got adrenaline being pumped and you got endorphins being pumped in your bloodstream when you're under stress and when you're in stressful situations. Now, if you're chased by a bear, guess what? Adrenaline and endorphins are a good thing to have in your bloodstream if you're chased by a bear. But over a long period of time, they can become very deadly. They can become very dangerous to your health. See, when you have those two chemicals being released in your body over and over and over again for a long period of time, your system begins to break down. And one byproduct of adrenaline, the byproduct of adrenaline, guess what it is? It's chemical depression. That's where chemical depression comes from. See, that's why a lot of law enforcement officers, they have... So many psychological problems. They have chemical depression because of the adrenaline that they live off of day per day or in their life that they, your, their body produces because of the situations that they're in day in and day out. And when you have too many endorphins released in your bloodstream, guess what danger that is? Well, it's your immune system. Those endorphins, they actually do damage to your immune system so that you can't fight off illnesses like you once could. Stress is the silent killer. I always heard it was high blood pressure, but I believe it's stress. Stress is the silent killer. And the devil uses it knowing the destruction that it causes in the lives of Christians and non-Christians alike. Stress causes destruction. And the devil knows it. And so he uses it against you. And against me. But there is good news. <laughs> Aren't you glad there's good news? Now I'll tell you what. If we were to stand and be dismissed today after those first two points. The description and the destruction of stress. Man I'm going to tell you what. Y'all to leave out of here so discouraged today. Y'all to leave out of here saying well. I probably wish I'd have stayed at the house. Because I'll tell you what. I feel worse leaving than I did when I first came in the door. But I'm not going to leave you there with just those two points because there is good news. 
The word of God is good news. Amen. That's what the gospel is, good news. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I need to hear some good news. Amen. We need to hear good news. The world needs to hear good news today. Amen. They hear enough of this other stuff. Amen. They need to hear some good news. Amen. And the good news is, in the midst of all this stress, in the midst of all this worry, in the midst of all this chaos, there is a God who cares, and there is a God who has the answer. Amen. Don't you just love it when the devil tries to use something like stress to discourage one of God's people? (laughs) And God says, I've got the answer to that. Amen. Aren't you glad that God is stronger than the devil? Amen. He's stronger than anything the devil can throw at us, his schemes. God is stronger because greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. Amen. So we've seen the description. We've seen the destruction. Let me end with this point. The deliverance from stress. The deliverance from stress. See in verse 4 and verse 5, Paul is discouraged. He's physically tired. He's spiritually troubled. I mean, Paul is at the end of his rope. I mean, Paul is in bad shape. He is so stressed out in verses 4 and in verse 5. Just as you and I are from time to time. Maybe this week you've been all stressed out. You know, I had one of our church members this morning talk about, Brother Kevin, I need need you to come Try to get my driveway cleaned out. I've been with my wife for three days. I'm telling you, I just can't stand no more. I got to get out of this house. Maybe we're all stressed out because of this week and all the bad weather we've had and the snow and the ice. Maybe we've all been stressed out. But look in verse 6. I got good news. Look in verse 6. Verse 4, verse 5, Paul's all stressed out. But look in verse 6. Woo! That ought to make a Baptist want to shout, verse 6, dude. Look what he says, verse 6. Let me read the first two words. Nevertheless, God. (laughs) Let me tell you something. Stop right there. Listen, my friend. Nevertheless, God. Nevertheless, God. Let me tell you something. Whenever God steps in, it changes everything. Amen. And what needs to happen in this church, what needs to happen in this community, what needs to happen in your family, in my family, what needs to happen in our our state, what needs to happen in our government, what needs to happen in our nation today, my friend, is that God needs to step in. Amen. Because when He steps in, things change. Amen. When God steps in, and Paul says in verse 6, all this stuff is going on in verse 4 and 5, but then he comes to his senses and he says, Nevertheless, God, we need to come to our senses and allow God to step in. He says, Nevertheless, God. Because when God steps in, he makes a difference. Let's read on. Because he's not through. Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, comforts us or comforted us. Listen, honey, you can be liberated from unhealthy, unholy, unproductive stress. You do not have to allow that stress to manage your life. Deliverance is possible for every child of God. Paul tells us God knows about our stress and it's God who ultimately will deliver us and can deliver us from that stress. Amen. In other words, this is on your bulletin. God was the force of deliverance and he's my force and he's your force. God is the force. He is the power of our deliverance. Paul says, nevertheless, who, nevertheless, God who comforts the downcast comforted us and he can comfort you too. By the way, the word here translated comfort, it's a compound Greek word that was translated in English comfort. 
It's the same exact compound Greek word that was used in John chapter 14, verse 16. The Greek word here is parakaleo. The same word was used in John 14, 16 to describe the Holy Spirit. The same word. Remember when Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit? I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, another comforter. Now this word comforter, you know what it means? Or comfort in our text today? It means to come along beside of. It means to come along beside of. Now I'm going to tell you, this is hard for you to believe, but when I was a teenager, when I was in the 12th grade, when I graduated high school, I was 120 pounds. I mean, I was as skinny as a rail. I could stand under a clothesline and not get wet in a storm. I was skinny. I was skinny. (laughs) I wore size 28 pants and probably less than that. But that's what I remember. That's the number I remember. But in my, in my hair's always been this thin, really. After I had my bout with the, the eye disease that claimed my side and my left eye, and because of all that, my hair's always been thin. But I was 120 pounds when I graduated, and I had a fro in my hair because I went and got a fro in my hair to make my hair look thicker. So if you picture me, now I know it's hard for you to picture that, but you do have an imagination, 120 pounds, I got this fro, his curly, curly hair. But let me tell you something. I couldn't, I couldn't make anybody scared of me because I was, I mean, there wasn't much of me. But let me tell you something. I had a brother that's 11 years older than me. My brother was a different story. He, he lifted weights. He was much of a young man. And when I started school, by the time I was in the second grade, he was graduating. He's 11 years older than me. But let me tell you something. I wasn't much to contend with at 120 pounds with curly hair. But let me tell you something. When my brother got involved, I knew I could call my big brother and my big brother could take care of business. And let me tell you something. As a Christian, you may not see yourself much. You may not see yourself very spiritual. But I want you to know something this morning. God has sent you a confidant, the Holy Ghost of God. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not feel like you can contend with with what's going on in your life, but there's one who God has sent, and he can contend. That's the Holy Spirit of God. You can feel big with Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. I'm getting close to the end. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Jesus says, I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another helper, a comforter. Same word. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew or exchange their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know something? Your job is not your force. Your money is not your force. As a Christian, God is your force. God is your force. Do you remember when Elijah, he was all stressed out. He was worried about where he was going to get his next meal from. And God sent birds to bring him bread in the morning, meat in the morning. And in the evening, the birds would bring him meat and and bread in the afternoon. And then there was a brook that he was by that gave him fresh cold water. Y'all remember that story with Elijah? Let me tell you something. The ravens weren't the force of deliverance to Elijah. Even though the ravens brought him the bread and the meat, they weren't the force of his deliverance. God says he's the force. God was the force for Elijah. He just used the birds. So God was the force. But now, if God was the force, who was the source of deliverance? Well, let's read it, verse 6. What does it say? Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. 
God was the force of deliverance, but Titus was the source of deliverance. He used Brother Titus to come as a source of deliverance for Paul. For Paul, the source of deliverance was a brother. And for both Elijah and Paul, God was the force, but he used different things as the source. You know what? A friend came to stress out Paul, and Paul got a new strength, a new inner strength because of the brother that God sent him, Titus. And you know what Titus should remind me of and remind you of? The fact, I said this last week and I'll say it again this week, Titus should remind us that we need each other. I need you. Wayne, I need you. Miss Betty, I need you. Joni, I need you. I can go around this room, every one of you folks, and I can truthfully say in my heart, as your pastor, I need you. I need you, Brother Terry, I need you. And I pray that you need me as well. Because folks, we're living in a day and time when the devil is doing everything he can because he knows he's got just a short season left. And folks, I want to tell you something. I need you. We need each other. And our word today should prove to us and should remind us that we need each other. You know, I even mentioned it last week in Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Remember what I said? Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they'll keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. So my question is for you today, do you want to be mightily used of God? Do you want to be mightily used of God? Here's how you can. You can be just like Titus. You can find a brother or a sister that's all stressed out, physically tired, spiritually troubled, and you can go to them, and you can put your arm around them, and you can say, brother or sister, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. I'm there for you. I'm holding you up before the throne of God. Somebody needs that today. Somebody in your life needs that today. See, God is the force behind the deliverance of stress, but he uses people just like you. Oh, Brother Kevin, can he use me? I mean, you know, I've got this pretty bad past. Can he use me? Yes, he can. God can use you and you and you and you and me. You can be the source of deliverance with God being the force to deliver somebody today. Amen? All stressed out? All stressed out? I done filled that napkin up. It's done wet in my pocket. Let me get another one. All stressed out? You can be delivered. You out there watching today? All stressed out, you can be delivered. Because with God, there is peace. There is peace. Brother Terry talked about Miss Diane's mother, 94 years old, wasn't she? 94 years old. She found peace in God. In God, there's peace. Psalm 46.10, one of my most favorite verses. I'll end with this. One of my most favorite verses, Psalm 46.10. And here's what it says. Be still. Be still. 
and know that I am God. In a world so full of hurriedness and worry and stress, the God says, be still. Be still. And know that I am God. Amen. Let me sing you a song before we go. I could not go on without him. I know this world. It would overwhelm my soul I could not see the right way to go when temptation or my soul rose but you know what I do he whispered to me oh thank you Jesus he whispers sweet peace to me when I am cast down and I'm troubled in soul he whispers That's what happened to Paul. Hey Amen. That's going to happen to you too. Would you stand with me? He speaks in a still, small voice. We're told it's a voice that dispels all my fears. And when I'm cast down and I'm troubled in soul, it's that still small voice I hear. He whispers sweet peace to me. Do you need to hear that this morning? He whispers sweet peace to me when I am cast down and I trouble in soul. He whispers sweet peace to me. Be still, be still, and know that I am God. God bless you today for watching. God bless you.